Okay, well, we're out for round round two with the 1860 Army, and today we're at the West Shore Sportsman's Association because it's only like five miles from my house and I didn't feel like driving back out to Duelist Den to function test this gun. So, you saw me in the shop, I filed the nipples down, and now we're going to see if everything works. Okay, well, I got a little ahead of myself there in the intro, so just to step you back a little bit, as you'll recall in last week's video, I took the original 1860 out to the range and fired it, and uh, I had a hard time. I had trouble with caps, and um, that absolutely caused me a problem. So I'm going to show you how I dealt with that. Okay, I have now tried Remington number 10 caps, Remington number 11 caps, CCI number 11s, and uh, RWS 1075s. And they're all doing the same thing. They're all hanging up. They're catching on the frame over here. So we just need to get this thing looked at, see what we can do. But it's not the brand of caps. I know some of you are going to say I had a chain fire because I didn't grease the mouth of the uh, the mouth of the chambers. Blah 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 blah. And and you're wrong. I did. I greased every one with this stuff. I didn't happen to show it in the video. And the reason I did it is because I didn't know how eroded the chamber mouths were. So I was concerned about getting a chain fire. So everything was packed with grease. So that chain fire happened from the back because uh, because of caps falling off, not um, not from the front. But at any rate, <laughs> it was still fun shooting a 156-year-old gun. Uh, but I want to get it performing right, so we got a little bit of work to do. Okay, back in the shop, it took me no time at all to figure out that the nipples were actually a little bit too long. So I, I got a hold of Dave Stablo at Lodgewood Manufacturing because, of course, he had gotten the old frozen nipples out for me and replaced them with new nipples, and I, I talked to him about it. And he uses C.H. White's nipples. And, and C.H. White's was, uh, was a guy who, back in the 50s and 60s, made a lot of reproduction parts for Civil War guns. Uh, for the North-South Skirmish Association guys. So Dave uses what's essentially new old stock, stuff that Whites had made back in the 1960s. And he said he's never had any problem with them before. But um, he went back and he checked the batch of uh, Whites nipples that uh, mine came out of. And he measured them, and sure enough, that whole individual batch is about 20 thousandths too big each of them so dave machined down a set of nipples for me to the right size but uh, because i was impatient and i was pretty sure i knew what the fix was i just went in the shop and did it myself okay well these nipples are just too long and the simplest fix is to file them down i, I kind of wish i wasn't doing this but i don't really have much of a choice now I've ordered another set of nipples from Track of the Wolf. These are .224 by 32. And I gotta tell you, that is scarce as hen's teeth. The trick is to get them level and obviously not to take them down too far. So, it's kind of a trial and error thing. Take off a little less than I think I need to. And try them. Now I'm radiusing the top a little bit. So it's not just completely squared off. A hard stone and I'm smoothing everything out. Thank you. 
Okay, all that's left to do now is try it. Okay, so all of that brings you up to speed to the point where we opened up this video uh, at the intro here at the West Shore Sportsman's Association where I've got the nipples filed down to size and we're going to see if the gun goes bang. Okay, I'm going to load up. Now i got to tell you, since we're out here at uh, the Sportsman's Association, there's going to be range noise. Um, this is the 3rd of July. It's going to be the hottest day of the year, but it's also the start of the three-day 4th of July weekend, and everybody is off, and at 8 o'clock, the range is already loaded. So you're just going to have to put up with some shooting noise while we get this done. Now I'm going to load this with round balls. We did conicals last time. I'm going to start with round balls so I see how it's doing. And I'm using four, five, sevens, which are pretty big. And the reason I'm doing that is because I think the chamber mouths are a little bit eroded. So I thought I would try four, five, sevens and see how they do. Uh, I may switch to four, five, fours later, but I just want to give these a try. So I'm going to do a lot of things to make sure everything is sealed up. But here we go. We're on half cock. I'm set for 30 grains. I'm using 3FG GoX black powder. And I'm going to pour that into a chamber. Now, the next thing I'm going to do... Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my homemade pre-lubed wads. I'm going to put it into the chamber. I'll just take one of these big pens to get it down. I'm going to take a 454 lead ball, put it in place, load it. Looks like I'm getting a little ring of lead, so it's good. Okay, and I'm also... Just to be extra safe, I'm going to take my black powder lube, and this is two-thirds beeswax, one-third lamb tallow. I should say two-thirds lamb tallow, one-third beeswax. And I'm going to grease the chamber, and I'm going to do that five times. Okay, so we've got five chambers loaded, and now it's time to cap it. And we'll see how it does, right? I'm going to use standard Remington number 10 caps. And we'll see if they all go off or not. Okay, it's all capped up. Remington number 10s. I previously tested it with CCI number 11s just to see if they would go off, and they did. This will be my first test with Remington number 10s. I hope they work. Well, I'm just going to be shooting at paper 15 yards away with the 1860 Army, made in 1864, loaded with four, five, seven round balls. Let's see how they do. Okay, I got a cap jam in here. I'll clear that out. So, happens with the originals too. How about that? 
All right, let's see if I need to replace this cap or if I can get the last one shot out. Okay, function test ran perfectly. All right, here we are, the first five shots. It's a wad. But you can see the first five shots did pretty good. That's not a bad group for a 156-year-old gun. Shooting a little bit, a little bit to the left. Not too terribly high with round balls, so pretty close to point of aim. I'm, I'm pretty surprised. Okay, well I loaded the 1860 up with paper cartridges uh, again, just like we did at Duelist Den with Johnson and Dow conical bullets and uh, with 3F, 23 grains of 3F Swiss. I'm also using RWS 1075 caps this time. So if this works, I will have used them with CCI, and with Remingtons, and RWS, and I'll be pretty happy that I made a good fix. So, let's see if they go off. <laughs> Getting a little black powder smoke in there. Well, the conicals are not grouping quite as well. Uh, Trek of the Wolf is one of the few sources I know for nipples for antique Colt and Remington revolvers. And they make them themselves. And uh, when I ran into the nipple problem back at the beginning of the week, I ordered a set. I had them FedExed out to me. So my homemade fix worked very well, but I'm going to try one of Trax nipples now. They seem to fit just right. So we'll see. Everything, everything is working so far. Now they're made for CCI number 11 caps, so that's what I have on here, but let's see if it goes off. Okay, and it worked perfectly. So now I've got a good set of spare nipples if anything goes wrong. Always have them in the can. And uh, and you can know that if you've got to replace the nipples on your Colt, and I assume on your Remington original, that Trax nipples are going to work just fine. At least this set has. So, that's it, man. I think I'm done. Well, when it comes to nipples, or cones if you prefer, for my original 1860, I now find myself with an embarrassment of riches. I've got my home gunsmith set, which works fine. I've got a set from Track of the Wolf, which works fine. And I've got a new set of the white nipples from Lodgewood uh, Manufacturing that Dave machined down to the right dimensions that also work fine. So one thing's for sure, I'm never going to run out of nipples for this 1860 Army revolver. Um, and that's great. So on that note, if... Uh, if you all liked this video, and I hope you did, I hope you'll give it a big thumbs up because that helps us come up in your queue with more recommendations. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel, I hope you'll subscribe uh, because we'd love to have you. We try to put out new content every week. It's usually black powder related stuff, though not always. And um, if you want to support us, you can do that on Patreon. And we're always happy for your help. It's how we managed to keep this thing going. And if you want to see more black powder content, drop into my website, mikebellevue.com. 
And there are articles and pictures and blogs and videos and all sorts of things, uh, mostly related to black powder or reloading. So anyway, it's been good, and I'll see you next week.